Okay, so the next step for us with drawing graphs is going to be looking at sketching exponential functions. Um, right, so we've looked at exponential functions so far, and um, these come in the form f of x is equal to a to the power of x. Okay, and a has to be greater than zero, but a can't equal one. That's just because obviously when a is one, your graph just becomes a straight line. And um, so that's not an exponential. Right, so we have kind of two different things that we can kind of straight away say from this using our kind of laws of exponentials. We know that we're gonna get two points every single time. The first point is gonna be zero, one. And this is because when a, a to the zero is equal to one, because for like all values, we know that anything to the power of zero is one. So this means when x is zero, y is one, because this is assuming that f of x is equal to y. Okay, um, the other point that we're gonna know is that when x is one, y is a, because a to the one equals a for all values of a. Okay, so these two points are gonna help us to sketch kind of any exponential graph we want, at least before we start um, kind of moving it about. Right, so we've got two different versions of these graphs. So the first version we have is what we call exponential growth. And this happens, and it's gonna look like this. And you've got the point zero, one, and you're gonna have the point one a, and that's y equals a to the x. But this is the case when a is greater than one. So if your value for a is more than one, your graph is gonna kind of exponentially grow. But if a is between zero and one, then what happens is instead of having exponential growth, you have exponential decay. So the graph you're gonna have, you're still gonna have that zero one, and then you're gonna have one comma a, but because your a is between zero and one, so it's like, for example, half or a third, your graph has got to um, decay. Also for these graphs, another important thing to note is that the graph never crosses the x-axis and this is its asymptote. So kind of like in a tan graph um, where the graph kind of goes from being um, really positive to being really negative at 90 degrees. Um, that is an asymptote. Um, this is what we kind of call this as well. Okay, right. So um, I'm going to do a couple of examples of just kind of sketching these. They're fairly simple until we start kind of transforming them a little and then things become a little bit more complicated. Not hugely so, because it's still the same laws, like the same rules for moving graphs. They don't change. Um, it just uh, becomes a little bit more complicated because it's exponential functions. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to sketch y equals 3 to the x. Okay, so the kind of two points that you need to do for any exponential graph is you need your point where it crosses the x-axis and when x is 1. So when it crosses the x-axis at 0, 1 because nothing has changed it and we know we're going to get 1, 3 because if x is one, y is three. Okay, so we can sketch like this, our graph. We start down here near the x-axis, it comes up, goes up like this. That's gonna be one, and then you take your point here and call it one, three. Sorted, graph's done. 
um, other than obviously labeling the x and the y axis. Um, so that is y equals 3x. Okay, so you can do this for any kind of value. Um, one where it can get a little bit more difficult is if you have y equals one third to the x. It's not loads more difficult, but you still have your zero one. But then instead of having one, three or anything, you've got one and one third. So this is one where we've got an exponential decay. So you draw your graph, draw the shape. That's one. And then somewhere here, you've got one, one third. Okay, not overly more complicated, just a little. Right, so we're gonna go on to kind of the rules that we have used previously for sketching these graphs. So it's still all the same rules that we have. Um, like we can compress it in the x-axis, we can compress it in the y-axis, we can move it up and down, we can move it left and right. Um, and all of these rules are the same as they are with any other graph. Okay, so we're going to start and we're going to sketch. Let's go for y equals 4x plus 1, all up there. Um, and then I'm going to say minus 2. Okay, so same as kind of with our other graphs, what I was doing was starting with where things should be. So if this graph had nothing else going on with it, it would be 0, 1, and 1, 4. If we had y equals 4 to the power of x. Yeah? So, then, what does this actually do? Okay, so working from left to right, this plus 1 in the bracket up there, this shifts it one point to the left. So that's with our x um, values are going to become one value to the left. So we get minus 1, 1, and we're going to get 0, 4. Okay, and then our minus 2, that means that our moving down, so that's in the y direction, so we've got to subtract 2 from our y, so we get minus 1, minus 1, and we're going to have 0, 2. Okay, again, like I've kind of been saying so far, the easy thing to do is to draw the shape of the graph and then draw your axes in. So we know that the graph has got to go, it's an exponential growth graph, so it can be something like that. Okay, and we know we've got to have a point minus 1, minus 1, so we'll make that minus 1, minus 1. And then we've got to have a point of 0, 2. So if we kind of draw in our graph, our y-axis even, onto our graph, um, we know that that point has got to be 2. So then kind of somewhere in here goes our x-axis. And then we have our two points. Um, something to be careful of with these graphs is that when you're drawing graphs that have an asymptote, you have to draw in where the asymptote is moved to, like if it's been moved left or right or up, or, well, for these if it's been moved up or down, you have to put in the value for the asymptote. And for this one, it's the graph has been moved down two spots. So the asymptote has been moved down two spots to y equals minus 2. Right, um, one more example, um, just coming up in a second, and that will be us for this video. Okay, so this last example we're going to sketch, and it's going to be y is equal to 2 to the power of 2x, um, and then I'm going to go minus no, plus 4. Okay. Um, we could do um, a translation in this as well, but um, like moving it left or right, but we've done that in the last one, so we know what to do with those. Okay, so this graph originally would have been 2 to the x, so we would have had 0, 1, and we would have had 1, 2. Okay. That's our original, what it would have been if nothing had happened to this graph. So, 
what's going to happen with this 2x in here, that means that our x values get halved. So we get 0 and we get 1, and we're going to have a half and 2. Okay? And then our next thing is we're going to have plus 4, which means our x values, no, our y values, yep, keeping you on your toes there. So our y values are going up 4. So we're going to get 0 and we're going to get 5. And we're going to have a half. And we are going to have 6. So again, sketch your graph. Draw the curve first. It's easiest. Um, the two points we're going to have. So we've got our y-axis. We know that's there. And we know that this point here is 5. And then kind of here, we're going to have a half and six. Um, our asymptote we know is at y equals four, because we've moved the asymptote up four places with our plus four. OK, so the last thing to do would be to draw in the x-axis. And we're good. OK. Um, that's it for sketching exponential functions. We will be moving on to sketching logarithmic functions.